Hello. Good afternoon, guys. So, uh, I'm Ravi. I'm the co-founder of People Tech Ventures as well as the Pillai Circuit. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how to build a location-based platform along with applications from scratch. Okay. I mean, many guys must be thinking about, okay, I, I, I want to build my own chicken application. So I want to build my own field data entry application. Anything related to location. So here I'm going to talk about, based on my experience in developing data like how can you build your own application. Okay. Basically giving some, taking some examples of databases as well as yeah, technologies already existing. And just so just to give a brief about what I do. So, so Deluxe Cycle is actually a free location-based shopping application and rewards, shopping and rewards application. It helps you find offers, rewards, and newer events from 200 plus brands and across 10,000 plus stores in the country. And we just, we just launched like two months back and we are we are now we are now around like 12,000 plus users on like on Android, Blackberry and iOS. And as well as we are on SMS on, and also on web web. And Delay Cycle, the best part about Delay Cycle is it also rewards, provides real rewards for simply walking into stores, not just for purchasing. For just walking into stores, you get real rewards as well as for engaging with your favorite brands. NASCOM, one of the biggest software body in the country, recently awarded as one of the top apps. And also, we got featured by Samsung App Store. So, I mean, I just want to dive to go to the topic. So, what is geospatial location data? So, I mean, I would call it as any data which has a location associated with it. So, it can be users. So, so most of the applications are users, like let's say uh, every, so what is this location? So it can be a location which is an exact, I mean it's an Android application which, which basically have users. So it, they can be a lap long associated with it. Associated with every user. So the data, the, the data can be of local businesses as well. The data can be of photos, where basically like some applications allow users to take photos and basically <coughs> associate a location with it. And there can be many possibilities with location. Like you can develop a lot of, that basically is leading to a lot of location-based applications right now. So how do you build such kind of location-based platform in the backend as well as the applications along with it? So firstly then, okay, how, how should I store this data? So I have this huge, I mean I have these users as well as places or what kind of data it is, but I need, I have a location associated with it. So how should I store this data so that the location, may, the data can be queried very, I mean, the data can be searched, queried with a lot of different possibilities uh, of querying. So we can we can use any storage medium which basically supports geospatial indexing. So what do you mean by geospatial indexing? So geospatial indexing is basically supports. I mean, it, it's basically a 2D index on the lat long, on the lat long attribute, which basically helps you to query different kinds of um, different kinds of pages, which I'll be showing you. So. Uh, so first, I mean, I, I would use the technology of Mongo, MongoDB, basically to basically to show you the, I mean, to explain you the queries that can be possible. To also and and also that MongoDB basically supports geospatial indexing out of the box. And there are many advantages of Mongo. So I just want to uh, focus on basically we need to use some technology to explain you how we, how the complete thing, uh, how can we develop the complete platform. So here I use Mongo because it's fast, easy to set up and run. It has diverse across all languages. It, the best part is it stores documents directly. Like what are the objects you have? Like it can be place or user or it can be photo. So it can it stores directly objects in JSON, which is not it's JSON actually it's a binary form of JSON. And it also supports duplication sharding. So I don't want to go into all that. So what is it all for? I mean I mean so so most of the use cases are like this, right? Find all of the other users near me. Find the closest 10 museums near me. Find the closest 20 venues near me. So find the closest 20 places with, I mean, within a distance of 5 kilometers from a location. So there are a lot of queries which can be, which basically use cases which, which are required by many applications. So how do we do all that? So that's what I'm going to talk about. So MongoDB basically supports geospatial indexes out of the box. Right now it's currently limited to only get like dimensions where there is plus minus 180 in each axis. And most, it, it, so to make the math easier and to make the queries faster, it assumes that the earth is flat. What do you mean by earth is flat? It basically assumes that the 
one degree of lat one degree of latitude or, and as well as one degree of longitude is the same distance. It assumes that. It I mean and that is that is not a problem for most of the location based applications unless you are very concerned about small distances. And of course it has methods to handle the coverage of it where where the earth is where it can consider the earth is spherical. But it can but the performance can be a bit less. So how do you structure your data? So the so by the way, just if you have any questions, uh, questions just uh, feel free to ask me that. Uh, so let's say, like let's say we uh, we assume that we we basically store the data of businesses, local businesses, right? So here I'm talking about local businesses, okay? So let's say we have an ob object known as place, which basically has a location, which is a latitude and longitude, and name as year and tax, okay? Tax basically this category is associated with it can be a museum or it can be something, okay? So you can store the location as a array, like mentioned here. You can, you can store the location as a object, like x and y coordinates, or you can, you can even mention any other keys, longitude or latitude. Now, by the way, how many of you guys know about Mongo? Oh, really? Okay, so that's good. So that's easy. So, but you need to make sure that you always follow the same convention of ordering, so that. I mean, you either follow lat long or you follow long lat, but don't mix up some documents having lat long and then some documents with long lat. Okay, so you need to ensure that the, you follow the same order of consistency. And okay, before we go about querying, so you need to create an index on the on this data. So because it needs to identify that the location attribute, the location object uh, attribute, basically, a, it's a, it should, I mean, if you need to identify it as a 2D, I mean, uh, 2D object, I mean, which is basically the location geospatial index. You need to create a geospatial index on that key location. So it's very simple. So here I'm actually showing you the JavaScript console of Mongo. Uh, I mean, you, and there are different language drivers. It and then, then the queries are really similar. So I'm showing you this. This basically, if you need to create a geospatial index using console, you basically do a db dot index. Okay. And by default, it will assume it is yet like dimension. It will create defaults as minus minus one eighty plus one eighty. And if you are indexing something else, like let's say, I mean, if you like something, some different application has this use case where you want to index, scale the index so that you can show the values between minus 500 and 500, you can always like, provide other, other attributes, minimum and maximum. But one limitation is there is you can only have one geo index per collection factor. And what if, okay, so and the other best part about Mongo is you can create compound indexes because. Many times in your applications, you, you you want basically okay. I want to know the closest chain museums. Okay, so it's there's always a, like something like a category or a tax associated with it. And most of the applications will have something like this kind of queries where you basically have you need to use two field, two keys. So that's the reason so Mongo provides the yeah, option known as comfort indexes so that you could so when you basically use a like, let's say you are sure that you basically use queries. Most of the queries are with location and tax keys. Okay, then you create a component index so that the so that the performance of the queries will be much faster. It creates a component index such that okay, it will automatically uh, make the performance faster when you are querying with the two field two keys. What if you I mean yeah, and MongoDB has much more complex scenarios it can support where you basically have not only okay, you you not only have one location object, you have multiple array of location objects in a document. Let's say for example, I need to show all the paths between. Multiple places. I have hundred places. I need to store different paths between these places, like let's say map directions. Okay. So how do I store it? So uh, and then you can store something like this: db dot paths dot insert name. So let's say a name of a place is Q and name of a place is I. Both we have both latitude and longitude of Q and I. And then you can you can basically store structure the data in this format: like name Q I and places and array of places where name Q to I. And similarly, you can have a path known as name Q I N. And then have a place array of three locations. Okay. But then even also, see these are uh, Mongo actually, th these we call actually as embedded documents. So these are actually embedded document. It's a document inside a document. That's what we call it as embedded document. You can even have array of embedded documents, that's what we are seeing here. Okay. And then you can create an index here also, like that's a place dot location 2D. So then you can actually make queries saying that okay, I want to know all the paths starting from Q. Or like I want to know all the paths where where Q is actually present. So something like this. So I'll I'll go with the queries now. Start with the basic geospatial queries. Next I want to find the closest 20 places to a given location. 
it's it's very simple. You can say deep drop days dot find location near the given platforms with from which location you want to query, and then give a limit of twenty. And similarly, if you want to know the and this is this is the most common use case for most of the location applications. Let's say if you want to know the common like find it close to be based to a given location that are actually close to one degree of uh, the given location. Then you could do it do the similar ways. And we use most of we use these as the basic queries to develop our application, and there are much more complex queries we use. But this is the most basis for most of the common application. Let's say I want to. So when you do a location search, you know that long search in Mumbai, yeah. it's a linear search, right? It does not understand the geometry of the. Yeah, it is a flat. It is flat. It's flat. It's flat. 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 So flat yeah, yeah. Which means again that you cannot use this as a very accurate way of getting distance, but rather as a yes, approximate not, search. Exactly. Most of the applications will not have a problem unless you are very critical about small issues. Yeah, and unless you are doing something that's around north pole or south pole. Yeah, and then north pole. That's true. Exactly. Squeeze <laughs> the latitude longer, not the distance. No, the thing, the thing is, it's a that long thing. But inside MongoDB, all it does is a linear comparison. It's yeah. just like XY. It's just XY, exactly. So which means that uh, if your yeah, curvature is uh, fairly high, like when your fairly high latitudes or fairly low latitudes, uh, it doesn't work well. Yeah, but it has, uh, it has support for those queries, right? Spatial queries also. So it's got proper spatial queries also. Yeah, it has proper proper spatial queries, so, geo near and spatial. So does it have a spatial engine? Yeah. Or uh, do you have to? So how does how does the spatial queries run? Yeah. I mean, like, how does it support them? I mean, it has basically it has it has this hash map on hash map onto the B tree something. I don't know exactly how does it actually okay. work inside. You mean you mean the spatial queries or the general queries? The spatial, the spatial queries. Like how is it? I mean, when you look at it compared to like the PostgreSQL spatial engine, like how do you compare the accuracy of the query that you're getting back? Uh, okay, I mean, as far as I know, these queries are not as also accurate. Basically, that's which way they assume where they assume that it is flat. But where they assume that it is basically spatial, which is basically they consider, those queries are fairly accurate. They have this because, but the point is like this. I mean, this the performance of these queries is much faster when compared to them. So, yeah. So the poster uses this, right? This is how the database is built. Yeah, and most of the location-based applications use this itself. I mean, because there's some. I mean, you don't need generally in most of the cases. And. And then, and then you can have a complex queries like let's say if I want to bond, let's say I want to know the closest places within a distance of five kilometers. So the, those are also possible. You can just say maximum dollar max distance is five. And something which specific to us, basically we you know after this way you basically search for Samsung and Galaxy Note or something. I want to know the offers near this location, near my location, which basically are or Samsung and Galaxy Note, Samsung Galaxy Note. So I can basically do so that's what. So I created a component index before. Because then these queries will be much faster. If you don't create a component index, then these queries will not be faster. But it will just take this as the index and then make the query and then again it does again the second query. So, so you need to have a comp component geospatial index depend on both keys together for better performance. And you can have, I mean, there are much more possibilities are like bounded geospatial queries. Like let's say I want to know all the places in this like, in this rectangle. Okay, so that is also fairly possible. It's simple, it's basically say that location within box 10, 10 to that. <coughs> so you basically, uh, so then you get the places, all the uh, all the places which are basically within this rectangle. Or, yeah. And simply you can do is center, from like you want to know all the places closest to the center, I mean from the center within a distance of 5, five kilometers. But, but the point is, dollar near is much more powerful and then as well as useful than we think. So that's I mean the performance of dollar near is much faster than within. So that is the reason many people use that dollar near parameter. And uh, there are many more queries which are more like as I said, like spatial queries and all which are not going inside into because I want to go to the front end part of the application. Yeah. Uh, so here it's talk about proximity, but let's say I want to create something which is more related to things I would sell as a retailer. Okay. I sell carrots, so is another store. I want to find the cheapest carrot. Apart from carrots, I sell many other things. Okay. So if I want to do such a query, which is... Maish, we can't hear you. Sorry. Mr. Mike. Thanks. Yeah, so the thing I'm more trying to get at is, one is, I got two geo points, and I'm trying to find what is closest, better than easy, out of the box queries. But now, in a given point, there are multiple things I, as a retailer, sell. 
I want to bring out what pricing I have for each of the produce that I'm selling. Um, if I were to take a textbook example, okay, I got mangoes, I got yeah. tomatoes, carrots. So it's a neighboring store two kilometers away. Uh, but I want to you know, bring out all these prices, put it on a website, and See, I mean, so would that have, how would the query, does it support? And see, it's all about matching your data. That's what I call it. Okay. So basically, if you, like, let's say, I'll take your example. So basically, I have all the products in the collection. And then each product, I give you a pricing. Okay. So then you basically, and then I say that these products are specifically present at these locations. So I can have an array of stores, maybe like, let's say if I have Samsung Galaxy Note. So I want to know, basically, Samsung Galaxy Note is present at these all locations. You can basically give an array of, which I showed you, right? Area of places. And you basically have each place as a platform. And then, uh, okay, but but you, you mentioned that the price of each store is different at each store. The cheapest one, where do I get? Which is the first one that came out? Who's talking the latest one? Things like that. Would it support? I'm not trying to get it. How would I do? But Yeah, yeah, exactly. It supports everything. I mean, uh, I bring a place based on something which is inside, as against comparing two things which are naturally there. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's what we do. We actually do a lot of fairly complex stuff in our application. So that's the thing. So you'll have to structure your data such that depending upon how, what you want to pay. So at the end of the day, it's just not just making it work. You need to make it work within your best, best, best performance way. So you have to structure your data. So, and in Mongo, what happens is that it's not a problem of duplication. See, in relational database, you can you, you are the main concern is you shouldn't duplicate your data. In Mongo, you, you do duplicate your data as long as the performance is good. So, for duplicate your data, keep the same thing like let's say mango at mango at some store one at this price, mango at store two at the other price. Then I basically say that DB dot is fine in mangoes and which is the cheapest price, like price less than this much. So, give me all the results. It show it also gives me the stores which at which the uh, at which this the price of at, at which these prices are present. So you could do all that. Uh, you'll have to structure your data in that way. I mean, I want to go to the front end now. I mean, so since I want to cover the both parts, so these are our We basically have a backend which basically a pyramid based backend, and uh, we so we basically have a REST API which our uh, front ends so all the front ends consume. And yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, say like how the how the Android location is obtained, okay? Because many many people actually make some mistakes here, and then also like I just want to make it clear to you know everyone about it. So Android location is obtained through wireless networks and GPS. So the pros and cons of each are like wireless networks are very fast, and accuracy depends upon the nearest cell tower or the Wi-Fi hub hub. So it basically varies from 100 km 100 meters to one kilometer. GPS takes a long, lot of time initially, but the first time for initial fix, it's like maximum one minute. I, I mean, around one minute. And it takes a maximum of, like, let's say, I mean, next after that, it takes around 10 seconds to basically take a, get a fix. And GPS is fairly accurate, but it's not battery friendly if people don't want to have it. So, how to write your code such a way that take the best possible, I mean, you want to drain the battery less, you want to obtain the location faster, you want to provide a best experience to your users. How to do all this? So these are the way we, we can do it. So when you, whenever you basically start the application, you say, you, li you listen for GPS and network updates, okay? And Android generally what it does is basically, it, okay, whenever let's say some expired expi application called for location, whenever it got the location, it will store it, it itself in here basically, Android itself stores it, Android works itself stores it. And when my application actually asks Android, it provides me a cached location. And I can, I can see, okay, and it also tells me when it is actually found that location. And I can see, okay, if the case location is too old, I don't want to use that location. Then, okay, then, okay, if it is too old, then I ask, for, uh, I ask it to port. So then I basically, initially, since, since the wireless networks location, I mean, location is very fast, so I get the location from wireless networks, either from cell, cell tower or Wi-Fi, whichever is available, okay? And, and, and then once I get the location, and most of the applicants don't do it, but it's better to, okay, take the location, provide the results to the user, because you don't want to show the user loading for a lot of long time till you get the approximate most accurate load. First take the approximate location, show the results to the user, and then and then in the background, and then as well, of course, you you you'll be getting the GPS fix within one minute or depending upon how much time. So once you get the GPS location, update the existing Android, uh, update the existing location, and then use the next use this new location to basically do do the next results. So what we do actually do we actually show 
the location shape effects on user when we are making the API calls like I showed in the front end. And yeah, to conclude, spatial is easy and fun on Mongo. You can now build your own check-in application on Android. You can also build your own field data entry or any other photos application on your next Instagram. So, and running Mongo on any cloud instance is very easy as long as you are developing something very complex and you are at a very production scale. Then you basically will have to go to replica sets and other stuff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we are hiring two Yeah. Did you consider MySQL to be special or uh, So, okay, uh, we started developing last June last year. Okay. So, at that point of time, we basically looked at technology stacks of, I mean, other company startups as well. And then I am actually not interested in MySQL a lot because I, 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 that time basically Mongo was very, very popular. Okay. And then the best part about Mongo is that it's, the development time is very fast and then it's the, the programming objects directly basically move, I mean, are similar to the data objects, MongoDB, which we stored in the Mongo. And then it out of the box supports geospatial queries. And we thought, okay, why don't we just use it instead of basically? And we and we always use the latest stuff. And we we are we are not uh, we we are ready to take risk. So that's what we did. Have you thought of uh, graph data with Neo4j? Yeah. So many problems can be solved. No, that's what right. I mean, I would write. Uh, we used a single database now, data store right now for all the see we use store all the users and walk-ins and all the interactions and everything in our main data store. So Mongo suits our needs as a primary data store as well as it also allows to do the geo queries. So if I use Neo4j, I don't know whether I can use a, it as a primary data store as well. So then I have to use two data stores separately. To answer that, uh, Neo4j is nothing but a data store, a uh, key value data store. Yeah. Uh, it, also, it also complements as uh, a, a document store. So uh, when you want to navigate your data, which is the case with geospatial usually, typically, you would want to navigate the data, right? So uh, graphs are what you need there. Mm. So that is when you could use, so there's nothing which uh, Mongo can do and Neo4j can't do. So you could actually model your documents. See, it's, it's all about what you can do and not can do. Okay. Yeah. I will tell you the, the point is, like, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of technologies which can be done because, but what can actually do it better? For our use case, it basically this suited our needs. So database, I think people should choose database based on the requirements. For our requirements, I think we felt Mongo is a better, is a better because one thing is we want to the developer to be very faster. We don't, uh, and then we, and then I was also used to Mongo like just two months back. Uh, that time before. So and then and then I found that everything was fine. So we just and the other thing is Mongo is fast and then the other thing is Mongo has this replication. Uh, I'll give you a you know, multiple things. It has replication which has basically read write replicas. So as the read increases, as the number of users increase, I don't need to again look into developing a new stack or something. So that's so that's where Mongo helps and as well as I can start I can if I have a lot of data, so then I can start across multiple equations. So that's where so the best part about Mongo is that I can increase my machines as well as increase the infrastructure based on the number of users and number of data, number of data. Yeah. Okay. So, so so then NeoPoji supports replication. So NeoPoji supports replication and redundancy in HA. Okay. The high availability cluster uh, uses Zookeeper for uh, replication and redundancy. One year back. Of course, yes. Sharding. Sharding is not there with NeoPoji, but sharding is there with some other graph databases. I can name a few. Uh, OrientDB is one. Titan is another which supports HBase and Cassandra out of the box. So your document store requirements get satisfied with you know, those uh, stores also. So those are key value stores, but you could effectively use them. Yeah, I mean, we are looking towards Solar and uh, because we want to make our search better. So that's fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, and new 4G comes with Lucene. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, one thing that uh, we noticed when we ex uh, explored Neo4j was there are two versions of it, and some HA and uh, monitoring features were available only as AGPN. Yes. It's kind of uh, above our know, commercial products. Uh, I think, so I just like one more thing, if, 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 if any of you guys are interested in Mongo, actually, we have a MongoDB user too, Daniel MongoDB. I actually am one of the founders of this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have any questions?